Hello, welcome back to the Demystifying Medicine channel. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Remember that time when you woke up one morning and you saw it, that big red pimple on your face? Ah, acne. Almost all of us have or have had some sort of experience with pimples. In fact, the common form of acne, known as acne vulgaris, impacts about 80% of adolescents and young adults. But what are pimples anyways? Let's begin by understanding what exactly is inside a pimple and how it forms on our skin. You may or may not know, but our skin is covered in tiny pores that sit at the hair follicles, which is the point of hair formation. The pores connect our skin to very important glands called the sebaceous glands, which release an oily substance meant to moisturize the skin called sebum, the culprit of our acne. When there is excessive sebum, the follicle can become blocked, clogging the pores. This along with trapped dead skin cells, dirt, and makeup are a breeding ground for bacteria that can damage the pore. The redness of the pimple becomes from a rapid response of blood heading to the site of infection through which the white blood cells, the defenders of the immune system, work to protect the body. However, the white blood cells don't always come out alive, so the dead cells and bacteria form pus. Now that we know what a pimple is, let's look into the different types of pimples we might see on our skin. A whitehead is a pimple that is small and appears white or skin colored. They usually have a white circular center surrounded by redness. They form from a blocked pore opening, which causes excess sebum and grim to enter the pore. Blackheads, on the other hand, are small black or dark colored spots that look like they are slightly raised on the skin. They appear when the pore becomes clogged but not blocked. So the blackness you see is from the melanin from the skin becoming oxidized. A cyst is a very large, painful, and soft pimple. They are usually white or red lumps, containing a fluid-filled sac deep in the skin, which can lead to permanent scarring. They often don't have a noticeable opening or head. Papules are pink, tender bumps found on the surface of the skin. They are produced when whiteheads or blackheads get irritated, leading to inflammation. Pustules are large pink or red tender bumps filled with white-yellow pus formed by the buildup of immune and bacterial cells. But what actually triggers acne on our body? Well, one study has found that a low glycemic diet, meaning foods that have less of an effect on your blood sugar like apples and most vegetables, resulted in 87% of patients reporting they had less acne and 91% saying they needed less acne medication. As well, dairy is another promoter of acne. Based on the results of a large study, it was found that those who reported drinking the most milk were the most likely to have acne. Stress is another common cause of acne, as this raises our stress hormone levels, also known as cortisol. When cortisol levels go up in our body, this triggers our sebaceous glands to release excess sebum and ultimately clogging our pores. Several other factors that can affect acne formation include hormones, stress, genetics, and conditions like PCOS. Acne-prone individuals have larger sized sebaceous glands that are stimulated at the time of puberty. An increase of dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, in response to hormonal increases results in excess sebum production and a higher likelihood of clogging. PCOS, also known as polycystic ovary syndrome, is a condition involving excessive ovarian androgen production, often causes acne. The acne often presents as cysts and lesions with sudden onset. This could be due to the negative feedback role of estrogen on sebum production, which is why taking birth control or estrogen can manage acne. Although it might be very tempting, it is recommended that you don't pop a pimple. We already know that pimples contain a lot of bacteria, so the squeezing action can push the bacteria deeper into the follicle, resulting in further inflammation and scarring, making the original blemish worse overall. This also leads to an increased chance of developing acne scars. 
Treatments for acne are fairly common and you may even know a few. Many treatments such as topical creams, acne patches, and even birth control pills can be retrieved through your local drugstore, doctor's office, or clinics. Other times, some people like to do home treatments like dabbing toothpaste or diluted lemon juice on your acne spots. Often, salicylic acid is a common ingredient included in acne treatments. Since acne can be caused by different variables, it is always good to consult a doctor and determine the cause of your acne. For example, consuming large amounts of chocolate and dairy in your diet can be a factor. Other risk factors include hormonal imbalances, cosmetics, dirty pillowcases, and more. As a result, when you know the cause of your acne, the proper interventions can be determined accordingly. When these fail to work, other options include laser treatments and microdermabrasion. However, these treatments are costly, so it may be best to leave this option until last. So that was a very basic rundown on pimples, how they are different, and causes of acne. Regardless, acne is a very individualized experience. What you may encounter can be very different from your peers. As such, if you consider your acne to be a health concern, please consult your medical provider. Never feel that acne is a flaw. Acne is something many experiences and a total natural phenomenon.